All right, today's conversation is about being aware. What do you need to be aware of? Be aware that God is always paying attention to your thoughts. Like I said, God don't care about man-made words. Man-made words will be able to speak to one another. One human being to another human being on earth. And don't forget, earth is nothing but hell. Everything outside of heaven's gate, my opinion, is hell. At the end of our days, we're trying to make back to heaven's gate. And the biggest trick, my opinion, is to double change hell and the earth. Don't get content and happy on earth because you're content and happy in hell. So always be aware of that. And you got two, you got two laws, heaven laws and earth laws. Don't forget, earth is hell. Heaven laws is your mental and emotional, what triggers your thoughts. And God knows you know right or wrong. Doesn't matter what your neighbor does, your friend does, your family does. If you know mentally, emotionally it's wrong, and that's what you feel, regardless of what you do everything everybody else done. At the end of your days, you're gonna have to answer for that. Your family ain't gonna be there, standing at heaven's gate, waiting to see if you get through. Um, you're gonna be having to answer that to yourself between you and your maker. However he decides to let that karma arise to you, the person you did wrong, what you did wrong, and you know mentally, emotionally what you did wrong. Be aware of that. Again, be aware. And aware of that God is paying attention. Regardless, everybody else goes along with what you did. The action, the words, oh yeah, I agree with this, agree with this, whatever. If you mentally, emotionally know things is wrong, to take another man's sin on becomes your sin. To take another man's ignorance on becomes your ignorance. You have to atone for that, answer for that. Not to me, not to your friend, your mom, your dad, to God himself when that time is right. To cleanse your soul and your spirit is your living energy and your emotions. That's, that's when you can clean it. That's when you can take care of it and answer and atone for it. Not after you're dead or dying. It's when, when you are alive and you can go back, not confession to some church or some building. You go back and atone for it to the person you did wrong or what you did wrong. Make it for it on earth and hell. Do on the earth as you would do in the heaven because God is always a watcher. Be aware of that. God is always watching. As long as you're conscious of that, again, you got heaven laws, man-made laws. Which one you think is important? God don't care about man-made words. Let their law, the laws. So you think about what should you atone for? What should you pay attention to? Because the majority goes along with this. And if you mentally, emotionally know it ain't right, hmm. Black men get the second voting rights in the United States. Ask us, how many of us think them laws been changed in the favor of us? The percent would be astounding. Astounding. We don't believe in the man-made laws because we know them laws are made in the, in the essence of us, in the faith of us. But when I mentally, emotionally know, I'm willing to die with that feeling in me. I will always do what I mentally, emotionally, my thoughts are, I try practice that. I'm not saying I'm getting perfectly right, but I'm doing on earth, I would do in heaven. I'm putting my mental, my emotional, my morals, heaven morals, not earth morals. A lot of things need to be updated. A lot of things need to be updated. I'm not saying it's not needed. Don't believe everything you read. In 2020, we just come to realize history books have been lying to us. As any black person, come on. There's a lot of things we question. We have to go along with it. Because we go along with it, don't mean we truly believe in it. Mental emotion, God knows that. The biggest history book is the Bible. Don't believe everything you read. Our masters had a right. It wasn't God that was called a master. Our master had a right to beat us a certain amount of time and own a certain many of us. We're all God's children. You think he'll put another man in charge of another man? He gives us free will. And when you suppress another person's free will, that privilege is off of a dying man's back. Somebody had died for it. Slaves. Doesn't matter the color. Slaves. A wife is nothing but a slave. She signs a slave contract, a marriage license. God don't care about your marriage license. Then enslave a woman to a man. She takes his name on. And she lives in that, based off her religion, 
till death do us part. Come on, what we assume, hmm, be aware of that, answer it. God don't believe in marriage. He believes in a union and a commitment. God and Jesus was not a husband and wife. You only get that when you sign the title of a man's contract, a marriage license. You think God got a marriage license? You think Jesus got a marriage license for heaven? He believes in a union and a commitment. Two people that meet and a commitment to one another that cause no harm to one another. You don't call it harm to God's children. It doesn't matter how old that child is. It can be six seconds old to 600 years old. It's a child of God's. God got a beautiful fruit bowl. He got a bunch of different varieties of fruit in it. He learned from us. He gives us true freedom. Our free will to choose between positive and negative. And what we think here and here, our mental and emotional, because he only one knows that. He don't care about the words we speak. Everybody can agree with him, like him, and, you know, pound, pound, whatever. But mm, you can piss something out there. And even though you may put it out there and you haven't truly took the time to think about the particular word that you're using, take the time and think about it. Be aware of your thoughts and know who's paying attention to us. God is always eavesdropping. A prayer is nothing but a moment in time when you meditate and send a thought to God. A dream is nothing but a pleasant thought. A nightmare is nothing but a disturbing thought that God wanted to make you be aware of. And if you believe you got a positive God, then guess what? He's trying to tell you something. Just be aware of your thoughts and think about your thoughts because whatever you think about the thought, that is a conversation between you and God. That solution, you can get no solution from a man that's better than a solution from God. As long as you mentally, emotionally go with, if God tells you to write, you go write. Be aware what he's trying to tell you. He works in mysterious ways. He learns from us. He learns from us. We are built in the image of God, like like God. Assume what God would do. As long as you don't call nobody no harm, his children. But just like I said, be aware. Words are powerful. They trigger thoughts. They're not surface words. When you take a surface word, you assume we know what assumptions make. Go a little bit deeper with the words. Get that mental and emotional into it. Then you understand how it affects you. 2020, the election day. Ooh. Don't take a look. I do believe America needs to be run like a business. But all business ain't good business. If you can't trust the individual and feel comfortable with the individual, it mess with your thoughts. That is what you got to answer for. Okay? It's a powerful thing. We're going through some changes. I think people are becoming more aware of themselves. Be blessed, 2020.